So we're here on this job today. We drilled that well right there about a week ago. And we have to hook it up to this house. So we're gonna trench it in and go right there. That way we don't cross any of the other utilities. So they've got gas and they've got power and they've got satellite internet coming in on this side of the house. Then they paved here. So we definitely didn't want to bring the water line all the way around this side because the entry door is over here. So we're going to crawl under the house now and go make sure that there's not any obstructions on the other side of the wall where we're going to penetrate. Okie dokie. Now we are under here. Right, let's go ahead and begin the journey. Dun, 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 dun. And then we got we got drain line there, so we're good. All the other utilities come in on, on this wall, and we're gonna come in on this wall. I'm gonna use this uh, this vent here as our, uh, whatchamacallit, and I'm gonna come in, not on the vent, I'm gonna come in one block over. That way the, the coolness from the air and whatnot when we come through you gotta worry about the pipe freezing. So we'll bring it over here a little bit. And then uh, we'll come through right, right about here. So that's where we'll dig. And uh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to uh, bring conduit. And conduit's gonna have to come up and then we'll have to wire staple our wire all the way over there. And, but the pipe, the pipe can be 90 and stay on the ground. Okay. Now that we've seen this, let's make our journey back. Now this pump is only going in there at 75 feet because we only have 79 feet of casing and the well makes so much water that it doesn't need to be below the casing. Or if you drop a pump below the casing, then you're going to uh, be dealing with a lot more sediment issues and that just basically uh, you have to know how much water the well makes before you can make that determination and you have to have a deep enough casing and a high enough static level so there's a few things that have to fall in line in order to be able to do that so this is 90 so this will be the end we hook to We actually drilled the well next door to this too. And then I think one in the future, we're gonna have to drill that one. But funny thing was when we drilled the one right across the street from this one, we drove our equipment across that open field where there was no house or no foundation. We actually got stuck out there. Yeah, you notice how that wrench slips? Uh -huh. Yeah, I feel like that wrench is bad. Yeah, it's like it pushes it, pushes the thing out. It's just worn out or either it got manufactured wrong. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and roll this thing out. Oh yeah, it is, isn't it? You just have to pick up and spin your roll. There you go. It was that piece. We have had an extremely wet season, so getting work done has been tough. Dealing with lots that have been graded and red mud, and stump holes. It's the stuff people don't understand. They're like, oh, why don't you come out? Hadn't rained in a day. And then we sink our equipment. They don't understand why. We, we, I think over there we lost like two hours trying to get the rig out. Or the water truck. You know what your footage is on your wire? Let's pull it to where that stick's coming out of the ground. That looks about to 75 feet. 698. So we'll call that 700 and we'll stop at 625. And that difference will give us the difference of the pump leads. Bigger than a pocket knife, so I don't lose them. And they're as sharp as a razor blade. 
always hook up your ground first. Then you hook up your ground first. Then you can't mess it up. Now this is a two wire pump. Most people know. We, uh, we typically only use two wire pumps. Because um, the wells in my region aren't very deep. I mean some of them can be, you know, six, eight hundred feet. But most of the time when you put a pump on black poly line, it's just going to be a two wire pump because uh, pump change outs are so easy. Now, uh, why you would use a three wire pump, you would use a three wire pump on jobs that are, um, the drop pipe would be PVC, would be stick pipe, and would require a crane to come out to replace your well pump. Those uh, systems that are uh, installed on PVC, they do that for a few reasons. Um, one, basically job security. Nobody can do it themselves. Um, it's dangerous to try to do it yourself because PVC is, even though it's stronger, it's more rigid, it's less flexible, it will break if it pulls out and uh, bends over too hard. So you have to use a crane. I actually have a video on that. And uh, it's just black pipe is so much more simplistic for residential use. But it has a maximum like working depth. So we've set pumps at 400 feet before but that's about the maximum you could put it, and you really need to special order in 250 PSI pipe to do that. Um, but three wire pumps, when you put a well pump in on stick PVC, is time consuming, very labor intensive to replace that pump. So a three wire pump, it keeps the control box, which is the start capacitor, it keeps that under the house with the pressure tank to where say 10 to 15 years down the line you start having problems it burns out that capacitor then the well pump itself it doesn't have to come out they just go under the house they troubleshoot the starter box they see you know if the capacitor in the starter box is popped and then they can replace it like that but typically if you have a capacitor go bad you've already got troubles in your system uh, that just haven't shown their head yet and uh you're you're putting a band-aid on it so typically, um, replacing your control box on a three-wire system doesn't really fix it long-term. It lets you know that something else is going on, and uh, you'll have you know, more troubles down the line. There is instances like getting hit by lightning and stuff, but two-wire pumps are just so easy to diagnose. I'm going to say 95% of the time, people will reach out to me online. They have a two-wire system. 95% uh, of the time I can diagnose it and be correct. When it comes to a three-wire system, it's a little bit harder to diagnose because most homeowners do not have the equipment that I have and you really need to be on site when you throw a three-wire pump in the mix in a control box because rather than being like say five possible situations, it could be eight possible situations and you need uh, you really need the, the multimeters, the, the special meters to, to test all that. Put a little roll right here, a little quick wrap. Flatten my pipe out. I want to stretch my wires. Keep my wire splice right here nice and tight. Don't want my wires twisting. Candy cane. Okay. Now we're just going to tape it every two to three feet all the way up. Which this really doesn't matter as much because the system's all going to be encased in the casing. But um, typically when uh, it goes in the borehole, you got to worry about the wire chafing and stuff like that. So. A lot of people like to put um, hole centering devices, those little round plastic rings, or they use torque arresters. I've just seen too many nightmare situations with torque arresters that caused bigger problems than they prevented. You gotta roll the tape. Most people put a torque arrestor like one feet above the pump, and when you do that, 
in five or ten years goes down the line and that torque arrestor is rubbed in two it folds over the pump when it comes time for removal and it makes the pump and the torque arrestor itself bigger than the diameter of the borehole and then you have created essentially like a Chinese finger trap where you can't get it out. The right way to install the torque arrestor is like five feet above the pump and slightly swell it out, tighten the clamps, and then put some black roll tape over the clamps and uh, just kind of keep it all stationary. But um, if you uh, secure your wire to your pipe and you do a really good job with it, as I do, you don't need a torque arrestor. If I go to a job that I've installed and it's only a few years old and the wire's already bad in a location, I will put one on. And, you know, it's only two years old, already had a problem, so it's under warranty, so I don't charge the customer. Those are very few and far between. Not every job needs it. Some people are in the business of selling product. That's why some people will tell you that you know, 35 items are necessary when you, in reality, you only need, say, 20. Or I've seen people, they'll put three torque arresters on a 300-footer, they'll put one every 300 feet, and then they'll tape the wire every 25 feet. And then guess what happens? You have all those torque arresters on there for all that safety, and guess what? Wire still goes bad because they only taped it every 25 feet. And try to pull out a pump with three torque arresters swollen. We pulled out one, it was 400 feet, and it had a bunch of torque arresters on it. I think it had six. And uh, it was a nightmare coming out. All right, now we're going to put on the well seal. Now, the well seal, don't ever put it on upside down. My grandfather was notorious for doing that. Sometimes you got to twist it, push it on. And because the uh, state we're in right now, it uh, requires a metal box for the top wire. So this is not going to have the bushing because it's going to be converted over to a metal box. And then the typical blue plug that goes in on this side, it's going to have to have a well vent. So we did away with those and put our clamps on it. We're going to heat it up. We're going to take our fitting. Now, we, if you notice, we're using ABS fittings on this. Once we pass 100 feet in the borehole, we switch over to either brass or stainless steel. You might think it'd be best to go brass or stainless steel for every system, but sometimes it's just not needed. You're talking about fittings that are four or five times more expensive. You multiply that by 100 throughout the year, and that's a lot. Okay, this part is done, and it's about time now to drop the pump in the well. And uh, before we put it in there, Justin, let's get, I'm going to get you a bag of chlorine. We're going to dump some chlorine down the hole, and uh, we need to get a uh, towel or rag where we can wipe the pipe off as it goes in. Try to wipe this off. All right. All right, set it off to the side, and then we'll put some chlorine in it. A bag of chlorine is 16 ounces, and you need uh, 3 to 4 ounces for every 100 foot of borehole. So in this one, somewhere between 6 and 8 ounces. So I'm going to put half of this in there since we've already treated the well right after we drilled it. I'm going to put about another 4 or 5 ounces in there now. Because as soon as we're done here today... They're going to use this water, and then about two weeks from now, there will be a water test done. So they have to use the water enough to get the chlorine out of the well, and the water has to be able to pass sanitation test. So now we're good. Got our chlorine in there. Now it's time I can uh, get the traco off, and uh, we'll start our trench.
So the first thing that I like to do is I like to come over here and start at the house first. So if you remember as we were under the house, that was our vent. So we're going to come over about a foot, which is going to be right here. And we're going to dig here. We're going to typically take two bucket widths wide to where then we can hammer drill through the, uh, the foundation underneath what you don't see. And uh, we can get in there big enough to where, you know, we can get down there and work on it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead now, throw it back on time lapse and uh, start my trench. So we have our ditch dug, and I noticed as I came over here, hit this wire. And that wire is only like, I don't know, there's a surface, so it's only like three inches below the surface. And they had brought in field dirt. You can kind of see down there, that was the original layer, and then that much of it's field dirt. So uh, maybe that was an old wire across the ground, I don't know. It's not energized, and it doesn't go to anything. I don't know what used to be out here. This is all used to be like farmer's field at one time. But um, I'm gonna have to contact the uh, the builder and tell him I found the wire. Because the that's there. So it just, it goes at the wrong angle. <sighs> Who knows? All right, I'm gonna keep digging. I still gotta dig up here around the well. All right, now that we have the trench dug, what I like to do is, I don't, I don't know if the right terminology for it would be considered bedding, but I like to make my bottom of my trench absolutely so flat and level that there is no chance for any stress to be in on, on any elbows or any pipe or anything. Because most undoubtedly, all of this has just been disturbed. It's all going to settle. So if you have a low point or a high point anywhere, you're going to want to make sure that you make that flat. Because I've fixed many of the systems in the past, whether they be, you know, ours from the early 90s or other people's, and it'll always be an elbow and it'll be broken. And when you go in there, then the two pipes are not, they're no longer at a 90 degree angle. And then you have to do a double 90 to get that, to be able to, you know, hook itself back up. So what I like to do is come in here and flatten these areas out as much as possible. And then we have things like this, you know, we got rocks, a whole lot of rocks. We don't have to remove them all. We just have to get them out of the area where we're gonna put the pipe. Because a rock is gonna be a culprit for a possible water leak. Because there's, you know, you never know what people are gonna do. They could put concrete here. They could put a concrete pad around the, the well. There's a whole lot of things that, that could go on that, uh, you know, aren't just, they're just afterthoughts. But I like to go down the ditch with my shovel. That way I can pick up any rocks. See, that's a big rock. I don't want that in there. Right. So we got a rock. We'll move that out of here. Now a lot of people might think this is a little overkill or tedious or whatever. But not me. I want to make it as smooth as possible. It's the little details like this. When you pay a company to come and put in a system and you have one company quote you say 2500 and another company quotes you 2800 you don't know what you're getting for that additional 300 dollars but what you're getting is experience and you're getting people who pay attention and appreciate the smallest details here so this is a spot where you know it's probably an inch and a half so if you were to put your pipe across that and you were to backfill on it you're gonna get a really, really harsh settle point on your pipe. And some people like to put black roll in the ditch. I don't, I like to use 
PVC in the ditch because PVC has a 450 PSI burst rating where the black roll has a 200 PSI burst rating. So right there, you're already two and a half times stronger. And in a situation like burying it in the ground, wouldn't you want your stronger, harder pipe in the ground? And some people think, oh, well, there's, you know, you could do black roll and won't be any fittings. Well, you're right. There's a plus and a minus to everything. But if you do what I'm doing right here, you don't have to worry about it. Get some soft dirt. And fill in this. Fill in this point here. And I like to pack it. And I'm going to move all the way up to the house. So now that the trench is all done, I want to show you all something that uh, if anybody's an installer, you might actually appreciate this hack. So if you notice here, we don't have enough to go on top of the foundation right there, on top of the footer. So we have to go under the footer, if you can see way back in there, it just keeps on going. What do I use? I use this attached to my drill. So this is basically, you can go buy this at Ace Hardware, it is a bulb planter. This is what they call it. So basically if you want to plant like tulips or something, you use this, you drill down, you drop your bulb, you fill it back in. This is what I use. They sell these in a one inch and they also sell them in a three inch. This is the three inch. You basically dig it as big as you can get it with your, uh, with your four inch shovel. That way you can get the, the drill in there and then you go in, basically figure out where the bottom, right here, that's the bottom of the, uh, the footer. And then you go on in there as deep as you can go because typically these are either 24 inches wide or 30 inches wide and we only have about 30 inches of shaft there so if you can get the drill in there then all we got to do is find the seam so we have a seam right here so now we got to go inside dig with the shovel and then use this and dig down and find the hole so let's go ahead and hop under the house and do that next all right well we've made our way under here and uh, I can turn my little flashlight off on my drill. But if you remember where we saw that seam, I think it was this one because we had that piece of rock that was about this long and I believe it lined up with that. I've done it before where I've dug a hole here and the hole was actually here. So what we have to do is kind of look outside and we gauge it and it's about right here. So I'm gonna dig my hole here. I've got my little army shovel. And we're just going to dig until we find the footer. Once we find the footer, then we go right on the edge of that with our uh, little auger. Now typically what I tell people is when you dig a hole like this, because you have to run your pipe and your wire and all that through it, Dig you a hole about the size of a watermelon. That way you can get your arms down in there and you can get your glue dauber in there and all that stuff. But you have to put a uh, you have to put an elbow in the ground here. That way you can get your pipe up. That was concrete. So we use schedule 80 elbows anytime we put a fitting in the ground. Okay, so I think I found the edge of the footer. Move this a little bit. If you work hard, you don't have to go to the gym. You show you get home every night and you're exhausted. There's just so many, so many rocks. It's ridiculous. You would think that's concrete, but it's not. It's a rock. Oh my god, look at this. It's a railroad pin. Look at the amount of trash that's in this ground. That's a freaking railroad top. A railroad pin. That's nuts. Okay, so this is the hole that I have so far. You can see right here, that's where the, uh, the foundation stops. And then you come over here. So we're going to dig our hole somewhere right in this area. Be 
just in line with this. And you gotta be careful not to break your wrist because this drill is gonna have so much power. You run into something solid, it'll break your wrist. so loamy but you run into these these round little river rocks and they stop you dead in your tracks I'm gonna move over a little bit there's the rock I was hitting now I'm down to uh non field dirt. I can see the color change. And basically what you're going to do, you're going to keep doing this until you run into uh, a time when you clean it out and you actually see daylight from the outside. Because eventually you're going to bust through, you're going to find the hole that you dug horizontally from the outside and you're going to run into it vertically here. Sometimes you, you, you're off about this much, but eventually you'll find it. All right, so I've been digging for about 10 minutes, and I had this right here, which I had to get out of my way. So this was in here, and I had to get it out. So once I got that out, and I had Justin go to the outside, hey, go ahead, put your shovel handle back through. Yeah, see? So this this uh, little three-inch auger, this thing works like a trick. You just can't have big old four or five-inch rocks come in your way. All right, Justin, go ahead, uh, get some pipe, get some wire. I'm going to clean this out so we can make a fresh 90 right here. All right, cool. Um, do we need to put a sleeve right there? Um, yes, I'll get some two-inch pipe out of the truck, and we can sleeve it. We've got our hole. You can kind of see a little bit of daylight coming through there. He's blocking it. He's going to send me the wire. You see it? Hold on. Yep. And then, all right, you got to pull it, and then I'm going to drag it all the way to the tank. Whew. Okay. Let me finally stand up and let my, let my knees rest. That was hard work. That was very, very hard work. Whew. Let's go over here and see what he's got going on. My feet are asleep. I pulled like 20 feet extra. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We ain't got much of a trench. We got more work under the house than we do out here. My hands hurt. Pulling all that dirt out. You ain't gotta worry about supporting that. We'll get the wire through, or we'll get the pipe through it, and then we'll worry about that. Alrighty. Well, here is our finished product. After we uh, had penetrated underneath the uh, footer and the foundation, this is gonna be our water line. This is Schedule 80 elbow. And uh, same thing is down in the ground here. I went ahead and filled it in under here. And then this right here is our conduit. I had somebody tell me don't make sharp 90s, make a loop. So I followed that electrician's advice. And I went ahead and made a little loop there. And wire stapled it there. I stapled it there. I skipped one. Stapled it again. I kept it on top of all of the air ducts. And uh, you can see the water line. We'll go ahead now. Do a double check, make sure we didn't lose anything. We didn't leave nothing. Okay. So we follow our wire here. And we went ahead, we put a, uh, put a staple there. Penetrated a hole that was already there. And then there we went on top of the air duct. Uh, we come over here. Went through another existing hole. Wire stapled it every three feet. And we come over here. And we get to near where our tank is. And we got another hole. This was 60 feet, believe it or not. 
I know things are a little misconceiving or deceiving on uh, on film, but um, as you can tell, we've got what five blocks. So five, yeah. This is the end that that is actually pretty easy to work in. Up there, we were only dealing with about three block. So uh, our gray wire here penetrated there. We'll come through on this side. I'll show it to you. Made a nice loop. Another wire staple. Another wire staple. And what I like to do, what I like to do, I'm running out of breath. I like to, to use PEX clamps on flex conduit. That keeps it nice and rigid, nice and tight. And then follow that all the way down to my pressure switch. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a lean back. And I'll show you what the system looks like. From my perspective, we come up, we've got our, uh, our water line there, our filter goes over, goes down, we got our valve, and we tie it into the existing plumbing right there. So as far as this is concerned, the system is completely hooked up, and we are done. Now it's time to go out to the well and do that. Now if you take a look here, instead of running the pipe over top, of the line set for the AC unit, I went ahead and I uh, pushed it against that back wall and I came over here and I made a double 90. That took all the stress out of the pipe so it won't break this fitting right here. Because if you were to keep it on top of the ground, it would have had a gap about this much underneath it and if anybody were to, you know, step on it, fall on it, sit on it, whatever, they would break that fitting off. And if this were to flood under here, guess who they would be looking at? They'd look at the person who installed it. So when I put in a system, I try my best to basically do it to where it knocks out every possibility of something dumb happening. We don't like dumb things from happening. All right, my knees hurt. I've been under the house for a little over an hour and uh, I just couldn't film everything. Wanted to show you the finished product. That's a little bit more important. So now it's time to head out to the well. So initially on most jobs what we do is we'll try to go above the foundation or above the footer. On this job we just didn't have any space. So we had this here and it just wasn't enough. Um, I, I really want you know more than 12 inches and I just don't have it there. You know we're looking at maybe 8 inches of dirt. So this is the hole that we had dug. We've got a sleeve here and we've got our wire, a wire running in the sleeve. And that goes under there all the way to where uh, you saw earlier in the film. And if you notice, see I got a little bit of a gap here. So I'm going to take some fill dirt. Rather than taking the tractor and just pushing down on it, it'll put stress on that area there. So I like to take some shovelfuls and fill in this area, this little pocket underneath it, to where it won't be under so much stress. Now we're done with that. Now we're going to move out here to the well and uh, hook this system up. So what Justin's gonna do here, he's gonna put a can of great stuff in there just to make the inspector happy. They just, they want you to seal around it, but it's all below grade, it, it's never gonna matter. So we're just gonna take the great stuff into the giant cavity that we have created and we're just gonna fill it all the way up. That stuff's gonna swell up and push out but it prevents it, you know, from having a pocket there. And we all know great stuff, you can't reuse it, so you might as well just use the whole damn can. All right. I'm gonna go out here, finish the plumbing and finish the electrical. And once I'm done with that, I'll show you that and uh, we'll go ahead and start covering this thing up and then we'll mark our ditch. Well, the well head is complete. Look down here, see my 90. I don't have any gaps underneath the pipe. No gaps underneath the pipe. I went ahead and dug out under here so there was no stress. 
Got my conduit leading all the way down. Got it attached to the pipe. I have a threadless sample port per this state. I have a well vent over here and a metal box. I know some people say that ain't legal because it's not waterproof, but it makes our inspectors happy and that's all they, that's all they care about. Now, <clears throat> what we have over here, these are sight tubes. So this area has a, a trench inspection and they want to make sure that the pipe and the wire is at least 24 inches deep. So by putting uh, some four inch pipe, cut a groove in it, put it on top of the pipe and the wire, you can send a tape measure down and you can cover the ditch without actually having to come back and leave it open and have them do a uh, inspection that way. Saves the day. <clears throat> and basically either somebody can cut it off flush with the ground and fill it full of dirt or they can come out here with a tractor and grab it and rip it out. They, they come out fairly easy. Um, but uh, yeah, so we got our hole there all filled in. Got the ditch looking nice and good. Somebody came and took my shovel. That, that guy, that guy over there. That guy over there, he came and took my shovel. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Now it's time to uh, cover the ditch and put the side tubes in, and then we'll be done, and it'll be time to go. All right, the system is completely covered. I've got blue flags marking my water line and I've got my sight tubes in the ground for the inspector and I also had to leave it open here at the house because he wants to see where my water line went through he wants to see that I foamed the hole and he wants to see that I used a sleeve so I have to leave this open and hopefully 90% of the time the house builder will have someone come here and I pushed a little bit of dirt here and he'll just have somebody hand fill that in but um yeah that's about it come down here i don't know if i can zoom in and you actually see the pipe down there you can kind of see it kind of sort of doesn't really give you much light come over here to this one see if you can see it uh, no. uh, yeah you kind of glimpse catch a glimpse of it but yeah so that's it. All he's going to do is send a tape measure down there, as long as it's more than 24 inches, which typically my ditches are about 30 inches or, or better. And uh, he'll be happy. He'll pass it. And then we'll get a check in the mail. But uh, yeah, that's about it one. That's about it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a long day. Now we got to load the tractor up and make the 45-minute journey home. <laughs>